Hello and welcome back to my channel. Now I'm here with good news and extremely legendary news. Epic badass news. So we'll start with the good news. Now I think most of us come here with a purpose, right? Uh, we incarnate onto this earth um, in pursuit of evolution and growth and all the things. <laughs> and I got to thinking, wait a minute, wait, it's all over. It is over. I'm, I'm sorry to break the news to you. Some of you will be happy, some of you won't be, but it's over. You can just kick back and relax, crack open a can of whatever the heck you like, and just chill out because there is literally no possible way in the universe to top the glorious majesty of this deck. And I'm here to review it, the lovely Arcana of Ice and Fire, made by a legendary master occultist that we all admire and love so much. And every single piece of this package is a potent experience. Um, and that much has been clear from the reports of everybody that have received their decks so far. Um, all of the people that have been privileged and blessed enough to experience this so far. Um, all of the opinions have been overwhelmingly positive, I think. Um, just the exquisite beauty of his art is just very undeniable, um, impossible to forget or miss. So, very exciting stuff, and I'm here to show you nine cards and the first edition cover card. Now, before I get into those, um, I would just like to discuss uh, really quick the production method of the art in this deck. Um, this is state-of-the-art uh, technology, the union of classical handmade art and AI technology. However, uh, we all know that there's been a big AI controversy, right, in the whole world. It's taking the world by storm. Uh, many people are upset, many people are excited, uh, just everything in between. Um, so I have a funny feeling this is all according to their design. And I find that very fascinating. Um, just the timing and the method used to create this. Just, it's a very important thing to underline that these cards, um, the AI technology used to make these cards, um, here I will show you the back of the card. The technology used to make these um, is not your standard AI, right? It's This is not, we'll return to that one later. This is not, um, you know, they plugged stuff into Mid Journey and like it spit out things and they just did some editing here and there. Um, this is their own AI creation. Um, they did not use a public thing like Mid Journey. Um, the AI was not trained on random public artists' creations, um, nothing like that. Uh, honestly, I have no, I can't go into detail about this AI because we don't know anything about it, but truly cutting edge technology um, and an incredible way of approaching uh, just the delivery of this. So these cards, these lovely cards feature um, black core technology, not cheap at all to produce, uh, but the very, very, very high quality paper. Um, this is an indie deck. Um, they chose once again to reject the fruit of using a traditional publisher, um, of course, to retain artistic control over every single element that went into this whole thing, which many of us admire greatly and appreciate um, because it fully preserves the energetic signature of the whole thing. Now, the Coven of the Primordial Dragon has taken quite a fierce stance on ordering through Etsy. Um, there were 333 copies made and they were first distributed to orders and covens and then they were the remaining stock was placed on Etsy for the public to reach. Now, I think you see nowadays, it's so common with 
the vast majority of occult publishers, um, there's like a mundane seed there, it feels like, where if a grimoire is published and there's only 222 copies of something, they truly don't give the slightest crap if some guy comes along and orders like 80 of them. Um, it's, it's like, just give me the money, I don't care. Um, even though this is supposed to be a deep work, you know, whatever hypothetical deep work that some somebody has released, um, I think that stuff kind of suppresses it before it even begins. It goes against the very essence of magic. And unfortunately, our mundane society and all of the truly magicless people in it um, have sparked this truly vile culture of show-off, all over Facebook especially, where it's like, hey bro, I got seven or eight copies of this thing, and it's like $7,000 per book, and it's, it is just disgusting to watch. Um, I think we all know a few books that would be really great examples, and we all know what books this is happening with. Um, there are a few books that, a few grimoires that became a status symbol for mundanes on Facebook. Um, and you're left wondering, hmm, do they lift weights with the eight copies of that book? Like, who needs eight copies of a book like that? Are you okay, dude? <laughs> but you're left wondering, like, because I know I can just look at this guy. It's not hard. Anybody can do it. I can just look at this guy and tell that lights are on and nobody's home. No thoughts head empty. There's not much there. <laughs> and you're like, that bro's lifting weights or something with that book, with that stack of eight copies of this book, or maybe the stack is holding up his computer monitor. That would make sense too. <laughs> but I digress. Um, as disgusting as those stances have been from some occult publishers who allow that crap to happen and the people that recurrently take advantage of others through scalping things needlessly instead of getting money in actual decent, honorable, legitimate, and valid way. We meanwhile have the Order um, taking its fierce stance of honor as usual. And I just love how they did this, um, trying to limit people from buying a bunch of copies at once and trying to make sure that as many devotees as possible are able to reach this deck who truly deserve it and truly have honorable, sincere intentions with approaching it. Now, with all of that being said, let's actually get into reviewing the deck. Now, I will show you, um, it comes in this lovely red velvet bag. Um, there is no box with this, there is a sleeve. And again, I just love every single element of care that went into this. Um, recyclable materials, uh, just to care for the environment. Um, just the signature elegance that we come to expect from them. Um, but this is the bag that the cards come in. Very, very nice. Now, I'm handling this so gingerly um, out of anxiety and if like, if you know, you know, <laughs> it'll be fine. I'm dying, I'm dying. Okay, here's the deck. Now I won't be reviewing all 90 cards, uh, just out of respect. I think um, a lot of these cards need to be experienced firsthand um, on your own. Plus it's been, you know, it hasn't been that long since the release. So for now, I will just review the cover card and nine cards that I have chosen based off of what called to me to review today. Um, so as you can see on this uh, sleeve, uh, we have the embossed sigil. Hope you can see that all right. Uh, lovely, lovely. Um, exquisite attention to detail in every element of this, once again. So, we will get into the cards now. And here we have it. We have the first edition cover card. Um, first chance um, seekers in the public have gotten to be able to experience his art in such a close way, uh, such a special opportunity. So here's that lovely um, 
lovely, lovely cover card. So uh, this card on the back, um, I will not show the back again out of respect, um, but there are some instructions. There's a message there on the back um, that I believe it's very exciting. Um, it's very intense. It's very unique. Uh, there are instructions for a right on the back of this lovely card. So there's that one. Okay. Now I've decided to go in order with the suits, um, just to have some coherence to it. Uh, these are just, you know, I, I'm always stumbling over my words when I look at this deck because I have noticed that many decks and even just plain works that try to approach um, these goddesses and a draconian current magic are very male-centered. Um, now we're not talking, you know, one gender being superior over the other, nothing mundane um, like that. Um, it's not like a human concept here. Just that with those particular currents, you really can't have the current without the goddesses. Um, so this deck, unlike many others, has a very, very feminine essence that many of us have been treasuring and cherishing because it's just so refreshing. Uh, there are so many crappy tarot decks on the market that are overwhelmingly focused on just the masculine, but it then pretends to approach a goddess current and it just feels very disrespectful. However, this is very balanced. Um, it's very feminine, but it's uh, respectful. It doesn't neglect one thing or the other, um, but we will get into it with the earth suit. So here is the first one that I will show. Now, that is just incredible. Um, roses uh, with a connection to Lilith. Just lovely. Now, unfortunately, I will not be able to go into great depth about these cards because I am very new to them and I'm still learning. I have very much to learn. Um, but on top of that, this is a unique tool in that it's about your relationship to the triad and to the current. You are supposed to really find your own answers, find your own way in this. Um, work with it magically and reach your own conclusions. Because this is a real living, breathing current. So here's the first one. I just, I simply had to include this card because just, I was almost crying when I saw it. I just can't believe I cannot. This is so special because again, I don't know why it is, but so many traditions, so many authors try to like suppress and hide the feminine. You know, um, and then also aligning with the mundane culture of like youth equals perfection, everything centered around youth and superficial beauty. And just then here we have this um, exquisite card that just shows all of this feminine beauty and power. I just, I'm at a loss for words. Um, I apologize for recycling so many of the same words. Um, I'm not using my th thesaurus today, like that's just, that's just where we're at. So I'm going to be uh, reusing the word exquisite and beautiful. <laughs> just really something. Oh my goodness. Now we have the air suit. I wanted to show the masculine cards uh, before the feminine cards um, with the other suits to sort of highlight a unique, another unique thing about this deck. Now we have the King of Air right here. Love that so much. Notice that's a, a masculine card um, being depicted by an animal. And then we have this one. I think, 
you know, it's I'm probably gonna sound like a dork because really, can you pick a favorite card? It's kind of impossible. But this might be this might be my favorite card in the entire deck. I don't know why, but it, there's just something about it. So the whole air suit um, was really unexpected and unique. Um, it's like when you gaze into these cards, you very much get the impression, like, of course, these are not cards. These are um, talismans. These are living entities. Um, it's like you're looking into a portal and directly interacting with a being. So we have this abominating one here. And the prince. That's... I got the hugest smile when I unveiled this card. I still I still need to uh, really work with this because, again, like, so many of the meanings elude me. Um, it's very cryptic the way that it comes through for me. But I just love the energy of this card. I just love it. It's like I'm there in that river. <laughs> Uh, so, and then we have the Queen of Water. And I just love uh, all the detail that went into the face and just all of it. Am I going to say the same thing for every card? Yes. So here she is. This one is the Princess of Fire. Such a powerful energy. Wow. We have this here, uh, the Prince of Fire. So as you can see, you've noticed a pattern, a theme, uh, where in line with what I've been told about the workings of the underworld of the forces that this deck deals with. Um, the male forces or the masculine forces are depicted uh, with animals and the females um, depicted with um, human figures. I mean, we all love foxes, don't we? That's just... Again, you get the biggest smile. I love it so much. I love everything about it. I worship it. It owns me. It's life it took over my soul. <laughs> we have the triad card. I thought this one was very special and I just had to include it. Um, especially for those that might not be able to get this deck right now. Um, here they are. Again, it's really something. Try a card. And that is all nine cards uh, that I was going to show you guys today. Um, I just wanted to give a very brief overview of just a few cards rather than all 90. Um, of course, there might be more material in the future. There might be more um, discussion and videos um, as we all work with this current. So that was all nine cards. I hope you guys enjoyed what I showed you today. Um, I just wanted to underline that, again, the price point of this deck was not to make a profit. It wasn't like, oh, they're charging, you know, 150 something euros for this. Like that's corruption and it's not approachable and yada, yada, whatever the haters are gonna say, that doesn't matter. Um, this was an indie deck um, published with so much care and attention in it. Um, the limited resources of today, um, the paper shortage, the black core technology in these cards, um, which really elevates the quality. 
Um, this is a very special deck. I just wanted to say um, good luck to those seekers who might be starting their right soon. Um, I hope that it goes well for everybody. I hope nobody gets eaten unless they deserve it. Um, yes, this has been quite an experience. Uh, the certificate I will not be showing. Um, that was a huge element, of course, of this deck. Uh, the certificate of authenticity, which I think everybody is so blown away and surprised that that even came out, you know, that we were given access to something like that um, of immeasurable value. Uh, they are also talismanic gateways, so I would prefer not to show mine in public, um, but they are really quite something. Uh, you can read about them online. Um, I don't know, maybe others would show theirs, but I would really rather not. Um, it is a holographic foil on the front. Um, it's like a linen paper. It's very thick and lovely, uh, gilded in gold, um, and hand lettered on the back. So that was really special, really something. Um, there's truly no price tag on something like that. Uh, many of us will be treasuring that for the rest of our lives, truly. So um, before I go, I just wanted to say, um, for those people who truly can't afford this deck right now, um, I know that it will sell out very fast. There were only 333 copies made, um, and some of those went to, you know, private private orders and covens. Um, but if you can't approach this deck right now, um, if you are not able to get this deck, I just wanted to say, I, I want to remind you and I want you to remember that there is also the website and there are sigils and images and texts on that beautiful website. Um, again, put together with so much exquisite attention to detail that there truly is material that you can approach and work with. Um, and I think when it comes to this current, um, of course it's a devotional current and not safe at all, uh, but of course those disclaimers are out there. Um, I'm assuming that you will be able to go and read those yourself. Uh, this is not a light, fluffy deck. Um, this is not a deck with no consequences or something that you can just casually like pick up and approach just out of fun like you would a basic Rider Waite Smith deck. Um, however, yes, while this is a very dark, um, dangerous current, uh, we have many people, including myself, so excited to learn all about this, um, as much as we can anyways. So yeah, uh, if you're an honest seeker out there and this deck is not approachable for you right now, just, just remember there is that website and there is material for you to work with. Um, I think with these forces, they respond to true devotion and you can't fake that. Um, it transcends everything. So the current knows your devotion and what's in your heart and your intentions. So I encourage anybody who's in that kind of a situation, um, don't give up and definitely use that site as a tool. So anyways, that will conclude my video and I hope you guys have a good day. And I'll probably be back to discuss more of this historical, legendary artwork. Thanks.